Hello and welcome. Today is Thursday, May 7th, and another edition of Steam Powered PD. Uh, today we're going to be talking about virtual field trips and some of the things that we can do with our students, still with content, but doing it somewhere else, meaning they can you know, travel or, or go to 360 videos or some way they can actually engage with other um, content from afar. So that's the plan for today. We kind of have a theme this week of doing virtual trips, starting with Google Earth on Monday and a tour builder and some other things. And so today we're going to be visiting different museums, different zoos, um, different ways to engage with other content virtually as much as possible. So I'm going to jump to a screen share. All of these links will be shared in the show notes, as I mentioned before. So if you need to jump on. So the first one I'm going to start with today is called Google Arts and Culture. And they actually have a whole uh, uh, service that's kind of not really known that well, but it's really fantastic, um, artsandculture.google.com. And these are all kinds of museums and zoos and, and different places you might want to visit uh, around the world that you can, uh, can kind of in, engage with. Now, sometimes as simple as a like the equivalent of a street view, which means that you can basically click through every museum, every you know uh, uh, different exhibition they have. Um, if I on artsandculture.google.com uh, up here, I can explore. Okay, so these will be 360 videos, a street view, art camera. Some of the art camera runs are really, really cool because if you're, especially if you're studying, you know, art and specifically, they'll show you brush strokes and you can zoom right in to see the cracks in the actual paint in some of these uh, different examples. So it's pretty amazing. Um, but if you also in the upper left here, so there's three lines in the upper left, I'm gonna click on that. Um, and you can explore, like I mentioned, but you also have different collections. So if you're looking for specific topics, again, this is just not just for art class. If you're doing language arts, if you're doing anything in history, um, whatever it is, there's all kinds of different themes and collections that you can focus on that are worthwhile. So I'm gonna click on collections over here. You know, there are different museums you, you should recognize as the MoMA and the Van Gogh Museum and so forth. And you certainly can click through those. Um, but if I also click up on here, on the upper left-hand corner, those three lines, go to themes. Um, one theme, for example, and this one I definitely recommend if you have younger kids to check out, here's Family Fun with Arts and Culture. So this is a really cool one. If you click on that, um, this will give you specific things for younger kids. And so um, they'll talk about books and movies, uh, different paintbrush things, and you can explore those looking around. They'll also have some things that are um, you can download. So for example, coloring mazes and more. So they'll actually give you, you know, PDFs or that kind of thing that you can download. Uh, they do have a cultural bent to them, but you're able to use them with younger kids. Uh, here's other, one other one that I think is super fun right now. So there's this thing that's going around. You guys may have seen the videos where they're letting penguins out in different uh, aquariums and letting kind of walk around and see them interacting, you know, through the glass with different animals like, you know, fish or, you know, whales or, or different, all kinds of different things. So uh, this one's kind of a fun one. They did a, a kind of virtual version of that. Um, it's not real penguin, but it's as if they're walking around the museum. Um, they'll show them kind of, in this case, it's Versailles. So walking him, showing around, walking around for Psy, um, the interactions the penguin has. And that's kind of fun for younger kids to check out. And then if they want to, um, right beside it, they'll say, now it's your turn. And you can click on it. And then you can yourself control what things you're seeing. So this is very much like Google Street View, where you can kind of move it around 360 degrees. Um, if I use my arrow keys, it will forward me to each room. Um, and if I want to really zoom in on some of these, I can zoom right in on some of these photos and paintings and, and that kind of stuff. It's pretty amazing uh, what they have available. And of course, even if it's not just a uh, you know discussion as far as the history of this, it can be art, it can be culture, it can be all kinds of different aspects of it, or even math. There's tons of math in these type of experiences. So that's another fun one uh, for the younger kids to kind of look around different museums and kind of interact with. Um, other themes, uh, you know, they have different places, like here's Spain and so forth, and here's different castles, French connections. Uh, we talked about uh, Italy on Monday, I believe it does. We talked about different, uh, you know, using Google Street View or, or Google Earth to connect. Um, here's a history one, meeting our ancestors. Okay, so I'm going to zip back here. Uh, and then finally, over on the left side here, I can go down to artists themselves. So if I want to focus on a specific person, um, they have all kinds of different individual photos, um, individual interactive uh, graphics that you can connect with, um, but also historical figures. If I click on here, you know, here's um, artists, but also historical figures. So if I'm looking for specific things, like historical events, and the art that surrounded that, uh, the Apollo program. So here's a great one. They have all kinds of different uh, high level, you know, science type stuff. If you want to see, um, there's a Columbia Memorial Space Center, the Apollo Soyuz test rocket. These are types of things that you can just let kids kind of run around and play with if they want to. 
Uh, one of the things that will connect with these, so these are kind of a resource just to have kids look around. And again, you can have them specifically go if they're looking at geography of places or um, different mediums. Um, let me do whoops, one more here. Let me do historical figures here. I know this was a good one. They had like uh, Abraham Lincoln, that kind of thing. Yep, right there. You can see all the kind of different art that focuses on that. Um, if you want to connect this with lessons that are already pre-done, this connects to the applied digital skills curriculum that we talked about last week that's already created, ready for you to go. Um, so if I go to that applieddigitalskills.com, um, go to, whoops, wrong, next one here. Um, so these are using those resources, using those arts and culture resources, explore the world with Google Arts and Culture, um, but they already have classes and lessons connected to what you might do. For example, here's a quiz, classmate of the Palo Versailles. Now that's connected to the 360 photos and videos we saw earlier. Um, here's uh, Make Art Inspired by Frida Kahlo, Make Your Own Space Shuttle Adventure. All of these type of things will have, if I click on it, they will connect those two type of uh, environments together. So yes, they're using, um, let me just pause that. Um, yes, they're using the content from the arts and culture, but they're also connecting actual lessons they've already created. And you're basically bringing those two things together. So this right here, I could sign in. I could assign that to students through Google Classroom. Um, this is the content it's connecting with. It's kind of all built into one. Um, I can look through this if I want to. These are different videos. Uh, here's uh, forming a group, so doing a group project virtually. Um, it's worth mentioning, any of you in RSU 19, all of your students from, I believe, it's seventh grade on through uh, integrated technology class has do have done asynchronous grouping on projects. Um, what we do in our district, one of the projects that all the kids have worked on, if they've been in um, our should 18 and by seventh grade, um, they build a robot together, build a Lego robot, and they have partners, but all of their partners, there are four people in each group, but each one of them is in a different class. So they never see each other face to face. They work asynchronously. They have a Google Doc they share, actually a Google spreadsheet they share, and they leave notes to each other saying, oh, I left at this part. Could you work on this? And they'll all work together, work on the same project, but they're just doing it asynchronously. And the reason for that is really in the environment that we're in right now was for them to get experience. If students have to build something physically, but they're not able to talk to each other directly, and they're not actually looking at each other you know, face to face like we are right now, um, that would be kind of the experience for them to have. And so that's was kind of the fun part of them, watching these build these structures and build these robot, robotic kits, put them together, but working together you know, uh, and not at the same time. And so um, if you want to kind of mimic that, this has the same type of thing. They're forming groups. Um, one person is doing one piece of it. Another student's doing another piece of it. Um, them learning how to work in group collaboration, but not having, again, see each other face to face is really an important skill, as we know, going forward. Um, one of the projects we're having our kids work on right now, one of my classes, my STEAM lab class, uh, I have five students in the class. They're working on a single project. We're actually going to be virtually running or operating robots here at my house. They'll do it from their laptops and kind of controlling it remotely. Uh, but again, they'll work together purely remotely. They're not going to see each other face to face. So um, for them to have that experience, I think is very worthwhile. Uh, the, what we're mimicking is kind of that idea of that telepresence. So yes, I'm here. Yes, I'm working on something. Something else is moving somewhere else, but I can't reach out and correct it if I need to, uh, which is very similar. If you think about the different environments that we have to do that right now, like, you know, the robots, uh, the, the the rovers that are on Mars right now, or the things that are, you know, uh, under sea or whatever, where they're controlling these things remotely, they just can't do it face to face. And so as much as we can give a kid's experience with that, the better it is for them. So these are some of the lessons to connect um, your applied digital skills curriculum with, let me jump back one more, um, and there's more here. I can I keep going down and click on more, uh, but connect it with your um, arts and culture already pre-done curriculum here. Um, so for example, this is the space shuttle discovery. And there's all kinds of different uh, information about it. There's, you know, 360 videos. Here's an actual video that you can kind of go in and you can kind of look around through virtual reality. Um, you don't have to have VR glasses. You can. Um, if you, um, your students at home, if they either have a phone themselves, a smartphone, or if their parents have a smartphone, there's a free app called Google Cardboard that they can install and they can use that phone as a viewer to kind of look around. And so if they want to do that, they don't have to be, uh, again, they don't have to have a, a fancy virtual reality rig. You just have any kind of smartphone can install that free app. We're going to talk more about 
VR and actual 360 photos, creating your own, if you want to create one for students or you want them to create them as a project um, for Monday. Um, we're not going to have a, an episode tomorrow, it's Friday, but for Monday, that's what we're going to talk about. We're using a platform called CoSpaces, and all of your students from sixth grade on have all created 360 degree uh, environments, meaning they've had, you know, either it was for science or for language arts, uh, where they were actually creating these things and be able to connect uh, with, with work they've done. So all of your students will have experience. We have a site license for the district. Uh, so we'll be covering that on Monday. Uh, pretty much any, you know, content area, again, that you're into, you can add that to this, this tool. Again, this is just a 360 video we're looking at right now, which means we can kind of look around as the video is playing. All right, so we'll jump back here. We'll jump back to home for the um, arts culture. Um, you'll also see in here, so another thing, if I scroll down a little bit right here, so some of the things you probably, uh, again, if you're looking on Facebook or some of the memes I've seen go through, there's a big push right now for recreating kind of famous artwork in your house right here, recreating uh, so that people are kind of just because they're, they're homebound. So it's kind of a fun activity for them to do. Um, and you can see they actually give you ideas and tips for things on here on this website. Um, if you want students to kind of recreate something to try it out. You can also, there's a, a cool app right here, right there. Um, it is a mobile app, so you have to use a phone, but you take a picture of yourself and it will compare your facial structure to other you know, famous paintings to see which painting looks most like you, which uh, uh, historical artistic figure looks most like you, which is just, again, another kind of fun computer science project. Um, and there's all kinds of different is virtual art galleries, um, there's different poses you can do. Um, like I said, a lot of different things that are already built into this. So if nothing else, it's worth kids kind of poking around and, and seeing these things. All right. So with that, that's kind of a, a brief overview and, and hopefully it's something you guys can play with. Again, depending on what your content area is, what a great way for them to kind of explore and check it out. And it works all the way K through 12. So if you have younger kids, there's certain you know, museums be more tuned to them. If you have older students, they can have the content from your classroom and connect it that way. Um, I wanna go to the Q&A for today. So these are the things that people have been asking. Uh, one question came up from Lisa was having students edit video uh, from her students in her class, in her drama class. So just so you know, we have a site license for a program called We Video, which is video editor. All students can have it for free. Um, if you do have the, the trial version, you only get up to five minutes, but we have the full version. So if that's something you want your students to play around with, um, just email tech. We will give you a link. They'll just click on that link, and that link will bring them right to where they need to be. They can sign on their Google account. So all you need to do if you want your students is to email tech at rsh19.net. Um, we video is free right now, but you have to sign up for it, which we have already done for you. Um, so that's, that's again, takes care of that component of it. Um, we're starting to move student people away from, if you get used to, I know we started with Screencastify and people have been using that, which you still can use. Um, but we're, what's happened is we've actually seen people start to reach the limit of their the, their full version. And the reason why is Screencastify typically was used as just a quick little, I'm gonna record this thing, you know, to show something on a, on, like a, a, on how to do this thing. So a minute, maybe two minutes long, not a big deal. Um, but people were now using it to do our classes, which I totally understand. That's, a, you know, makes sense to record a full 30 minute class say with this program. Um, but because of that, we're starting to have teachers reach the limit of what the free version allows them to. So my recommendation is to kind of make that transition over when you feel comfortable with it to using Google Meet as your screen recorder. So if you go to meet.google.com, just yourself, you can just go yourself, set up a, a sample meeting. Again, you want to be you, but in the lower right hand corner, you click present and do the entire screen. That means just like I'm doing right now, you will see the screen with your little video beside it. And that works the same basically as uh, Screencastify. So you can do screenshots if you need to or whatever it is. Um, but what you're done, you'll click a recording. So you'll click in the lower right hand corner, click the three dots and record that. That video will go into your Google Drive and you can share it just like you would Screencastify. Um, the benefit of Screencastify is it's just one click. You click, you know, record and you're, you're done. Um, this is like two clicks or three clicks. So it's a little bit more complicated, but it's also unlimited. So we don't have to worry about storage space. Um, Google provides unlimited storage for videos. I, I think the limit is something like eight hours or something ridiculous, but um, we don't have to worry about that. And then the other thing I was going to share um, as far as um, uh, you know, one shout out to the, for the Q&A is um, you might have noticed or maybe got the email that uh, the district is starting to look for volunteers for people that are interested in um, helping out with, um, what did I call it? 
it right here. Um, if you're interested in signing up to volunteer for the lunchroom, so they've been doing Monday, Wednesdays, and Fridays in our lunchroom as far as you know, packing sandwiches and getting all stuff ready. Um, and the same people, you know, I know there's been a lot of volunteers, but they can always use more. Um, volunteering can be the entire time. It can be a full day. That's seven to one. It could be half day. Let's say you're just doing morning or just doing the afternoon. Um, so that's something you're interested in. Uh, jump on here. I'll throw this right in the chat and this link right here, and you would sign up for whatever days you have available. Uh, I do have a question here I want to check out. Uh, do, do you have to have a Gmail? Oh, good question. Do you have to have a Google or ac uh, account to access? Um, the, so the answer is no. The Google Arts and, and Culture is 100% free. So anybody can come, jump on, look at it. I don't. I never run into anything that you need an account to connect to. I don't. I've never seen one. So you can go on there. Anybody can. You can share with anybody. Um, the only thing that you would need an account for is if you do want to connect those content to the Applied Digital Skills lesson. So you want to go to the Applied Digital Skills curriculum first. And again, we covered that last week, I believe on Thursday, so uh, the April 30th. So if you want to check out that episode, that will talk about different Applied Digital Skills. I will probably at some point, maybe in the future, do another round of that. I just think that's such an important um, a tool that we could be using in our district for all different grade levels. So at some point, I'll revisit that. Um, but if you want to go to that episode, and you can see the steps of that. Once you've done that, you can add these lessons to your skill set. So your students can say, oh, I want you to do this lesson, or I want you to do that one, or whatever. Um, so no, you do not need. Um, so the other question was about Google Meets, uh, when you hit record to make the recording. So I'm going to try to do a screen share here. I think it will show you. Let me see if this will work. Okay, I don't know if you can see my, it looks like you can. The lower right here, let me click on this. So if I'm doing a screen recording right now, I'll go to meet.google.com. I just say, create a new one. You call it whatever you want. Call it Latin class. Okay, so there it is. And you start it like this. And it'll just be you inside of it, right? Nobody else would be here. It'll just be you. And if I want to do a screen share, I'm going to move my cursor, go down to the little bottom right down here, and you'll see right now it says I'm presenting because I already am. But it would say, would you like to present? I'll click on that. What do you want to present? Do you want to present your entire screen or a single tab? Usually, most of the time, you can do the entire screen. The reason why I do that is simply because it's I don't have to worry about if I which tab I'm on or if I forgot a tab or whatever. So unless there's a reason not to, I usually just do the entire screen. Then once you started that, I'm going to click over here in the lower right-hand corner, I am already recording this, so I can use this to share with other people. But if you haven't already, you can click Start Recording right here. Uh, and that's it. And when you're done, when I hit Stop, it will stop recording. It will take a minute or two, it will, you know, a couple minutes or whatever, maybe let's say five minutes, no longer than that. And then you'll get an email in your regular email inbox that says, uh, Google Meet just did this recording. Here it is. And you can click on it. Um, you can download it if you want to, or you can send it directly to Google Drive. It will take a few minutes for it to be watchable. So the reason why they do that, why does it take a, you know, why can't it be watchable immediately? Um, Google actually uses what's called content ID to scan the thing. And the reason why they do this is they wouldn't want you to record right now. If I recorded a movie at the movie theater, let's say the movie theaters were still rolling right now. And I recorded that. And then I share that out through Google Drive and just with everybody. Um, that's why the same thing in YouTube, why they really hesitant to use you know, copyrighted uh, music. If you ever hear copyrighted music in YouTube, uh, it doesn't take long before it gets taken down. So the same thing in here. That's why it's not instantaneously. That said, it shouldn't take you know less than a day, certainly, but probably less than that. Like I usually get these recordings within like 10 minutes. They'll pop up. I'll be able to download them and use them and, and edit them or whatever I need to do. But that recording right there, you can send directly to your Google Drive. And if you want to from there, upload it to your Google Classroom or however you want to share it, you're good to go. Um, they will all be stored in a folder in your Google Drive under a folder called Meet Recordings. Um, the other interesting thing to note, and I don't know if this is worthwhile or not, but just so you know, if you do have a chat, let's say you're doing this with your class and you want to record the chat, it automatically creates a Google Doc with the chat text right next to it in that same folder um, if you need that for some reason. All right, great questions. 
That's it for right now. Okay. Uh, I did want to share one other um, kind of, uh, you know, extra credit. But this was from one of our own teachers. So Miss Gibney, um, who's an educator over in, actually, I'm going to keep that presenting up right now because I'm going to show something. Um, an educator, uh, she's a, a elementary teacher over in Anna Dixmont. So she shared this with the, her staff. And I just thought it was worth sharing with everybody. Uh, Acadia National Park is doing electric field trips right now. Um, so you will email this account. And again, this is all in the show notes. So if you go to the show notes, if you go to rsu19.info and click on the, the link for today, or if you go to um, seampowerlearning.org and click on the link for today. Uh, so this email, this account, they will do, depending on what grade level you're working with, but they do all kinds of different um, virtual field trips. They have readings with rangers. Uh, she, so she, I believe that's the one that she did. She had a ranger do um, like an animal kind of uh, scavenger hunt virtually, uh, which was super fun, she said. It went really well. Um, and there's other ones that are available for older grades. Um, if you're interested in that. So uh, I think the sixth grade and so forth. Um, yeah, his grade up to seventh grade, so middle school. Um, so those are the type of things. So I just thought that was a really cool kind of virtual field trip with our own, you know, uh, uh, main, you know, National Park Service. So I think that's fantastic. Um, again, if you're interested in this information, this is all linked right in the show notes. You can click on that and pull it up and you can go from there. I want to thank... Uh, 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 I want to thank Ms. Gibney for sharing that too. That was a great uh, chair for everybody. All right. So we will not be having an episode tomorrow. I do have another meeting at the same time that I cannot get out of. So I will not be available tomorrow, um, but we will pick this up on Monday. Um, just to finish out the, the week that we've been talking about, we've been doing, you know, kind of virtual field trips and in places and, and culture and arts and that kind of stuff. Um, on Monday, we will be doing a session on 3D modeling. And what I mean by that is uh, virtual reality. Again, it's not going to be as scary as it sounds. All of your students who have, uh, from sixth grade on, have had some experience with VR. Um, some of the seniors or juniors may not have because they may have already moved past by the time we started to do this. I'm not sure exactly what that cutoff is. Um, I have to think about that. But certainly from sixth grade, seventh grade, eighth graders, and your ninth graders all have had experience uh, using this program to do something with it. Um, and we've added more to it since the last couple of years. So I'll just show you um, if you want to make a virtual environment, if you want to add different you know, uh, animations in there, have, you know, maybe it's a, a again a virtual field trip that you have students create um, we'll go through the steps of creating a very simple one um, all your students already have accounts and if they don't know what theirs is i can show you how to get that and add that to it um, it should be a really good uh, episode if you have anybody that's interested in this kind of thing it's another type of projects that kids can work on that's above and beyond just the standard slideshow so most kids you know they're used to doing slideshows or papers that kind of stuff if you want to you know accept that same kind of content i look i want you to show me this this and this um, but you want to do it in like a more engaging way this is a really fun program to do that um, one example i'll just give you and i'll give you a bunch of examples on monday but one example we did last year is we had all the seventh graders, they read a story, they did it in groups, and they worked on different scenes from that story. So they do five different scenes, like the introduction, you know, the rising uh, action, the climax, the denouements, and the closing, you know, final piece of the, of the story. So they did the five different scenes from the book. But here's the cool thing. They would recreate scenes from the stories but they would do them with the characters, but they were different scenes that weren't actually in the care in the story. And what that what I mean by that is they would put them in different situations. And the whole purpose was, is could you tell me what that character, how they would react if they were in this type of situation? And they'd be like, well, I think Pony Boy would do this. I think that, you know, such and such character would react this way. And so they were able to do things. That's a pretty high level order of thinking if you think about it. If you read a story, you know the character well enough that you could take that character put them in a different situation and kind of figure out how they would react. Um, that's really a pretty higher order thinking way of, of looking at, you know, literature. Um, so it was super fun. Um, we had one story. I'll see if I can find this one to share it, but it was just kind of a fun, um, the story in the story, there's a character who is, she, there's a mom who's, uh, uh, I believe she's vacuuming a rug in the living room. And all of a sudden the squirrel runs in and kind of gets stuck in the vacuum, right? Which is, ah. And so one of the groups did it as from the perspective of, the mom, you know, vacuum up this animal coming in. But then another group did it from his perspective of the squirrel themselves coming in and seeing this big, huge vacuum there. So because it was virtual reality, they could do it any way they wanted to. So it gave them a little creativity too. Um, so we'll be doing that on Monday, same time, one o'clock, uh, co-spaces. I'll have all the information available on the website beforehand. So you've got to check that out. Uh, and I think with that, I'll do one more check to see if there's any questions. I don't think there's any final questions here. Yep, it looks good. All right, awesome. 
So thank you all very much. Have a great long weekend. Hopefully it's uh, really nice out like it is today. I don't know about you guys, but it's beautiful at home here. So hopefully it's nice for you guys, and uh, I will see you on Monday. Thanks, guys.